I'm Scott Ad Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm going to comment on a comment that Javier made about the whole process of, of looking for a permanent home here in Nicaragua and talking about how it with he's doing all of his due diligence as we recommend. He's going to put in three years of looking to make sure he's finding the right place and then he's really got to hope that he's made the right decision because as someone who is looking at a retirement plan most likely for coming to Nicaragua, he's going to be getting a little bit up there in age and the time that he puts in will move him farther along the path and his opportunities for readjusting after he's made that decision will be fewer. So he's really hoping that in doing that he makes the right decision and that creates some trepidation, I think, in a lot of people. And I think there's something really important that we need to talk about when it comes to retirement, housing and apartments and planning and that kind of thing because we have a lot of people who are looking at relocation and they need to consider whether they're retiring now or just thinking about it in retirement terms in the future, there's some things we need to think about. So we're gonna talk about that right after the bump. When it comes to retirement, Nicaragua is an excellent choice. This is one of those really amazing hidden gems of retirement opportunity because of the great weather, especially as you enter retirement. People tend to be looking for warmer climates and a reduction in climactic change, seasonal change throughout the year. They're looking for a place that's a little easier on the muscles, easier on the bones, and doesn't have those weather events like really severe rain or a lot of snow and ice that make it potentially dangerous when you're in those retirement years. Plus, you need access to an excellent healthcare system. So getting away from places like the US and Canada to a place that has more universal healthcare and great public and private options and easy access to extensive medical care throughout the region, such as Medellin, Colombia, Mexico City, Mexico, San Salvador, El Salvador, etc., can be really important. So Nicaragua is a really key destination for lots of reasons for a lot of people, either when you're when you're younger, but you maybe want to retire someday, not that you everyone wants to retire someday, but you're thinking about it, you're starting to like build a plan. Some people want to come down and get a home with the eye towards using it for retirement sometime in the future. Maybe you're 40, but you want to buy a home now. And then when you're 65 or 70, yeah, you're going to come down and already have it, already have it be your family home and so forth. So retirement planning and discussions are, are really key for us in our community here and for Nicaragua travel and relocation in general, simply because it's such an important part of the Nicaraguan expatting experience. Sure, there's a lot of digital nomads looking in Nicaragua as well, and you may not be considering it for retirement in any way whatsoever, but a great number of you are. And Javier's comments were really important, and they make me think of something that I think we don't say often enough. So Javier mentioned that when we talk about, and I said this in the intro, but when we're talking about Nicaragua and we're talking about coming down, we're like, you got to come down and spend time. You have to make sure that Nicaragua is right for you. You got to make sure that you're in the right department, that you're in the right city, that you're near enough to the beach, far enough from the city center, near a church, far from a church, whatever little thing it is that matters for you and learn what the houses are like, the housing market, all kinds of things, because it takes a long time to be able to make a good decision about buying a house. Uh, and so that's for a lot of reasons, cost, location, style, amenities, neighborhood, street, access to things, delivery options with Pedidos Ja. Putting all those things together, it just takes time to do this right. It takes time to do it anywhere right, but here it's a bit harder. And really, it's just because you're moving from another country, coming in with lots of unknowns. It's a country you can't research well online or from abroad, so it makes it a lot more challenging, and all that's fine. But as Javier mentions, that makes it a lot more scary or difficult for someone who's coming down either nearing retirement age or into their retirement years, because putting in that time to find a house can be a, a really noticeable percentage of the time that they have. And then, of course, it's scary once you make that decision that you're then trapped and, and you don't have the time to adjust that decision later. So there's a lot of reasons why retirees are a lot more nervous about buying homes and going through this process that we recommend uh, because they just have risks that younger people do not have. That's absolutely true. But this brings up an important point. If you're a retiree or nearing retirement, thinking of this in retirement terms. Now, of course, if you're 30 and you just want to buy a home, you want to use it for 30 years, and then someday you're going to also use it for retirement, that's different. But when you're actually in that retirement zone where you're actively making decisions around retirement, maybe you're 60, you want to get the house now so that by the time you're 62 and a half, you can move in and, and just spend your retirement there. Great. So this would apply somewhere in there. If you're going through this process, even if it's just three years, even if you're only 60, you're still looking at a lot of time that you're going to be spending burning up looking for a house. Well, let me ask an important question. 
for retirement, why are most of you, there's always an exception, why are most of you looking at houses at all? There's a couple things that happen with retirement. One, the act of retirement, let alone the act of becoming an expat, moving abroad, anything like that, moving to a new country, all of that, all of these things trigger major life changes. And when you have major life changes, owning a house is a bad idea. These are things that lean you away heavily from wanting to own a house. And in retirement, we don't just have life changes, but we have multiple life changes that happen throughout retirement. In early retirement, we have one set of concerns, just having a place where we can do our hobbies, a place where we can relax. We want to really have some luxury and enjoy. That's fantastic. As you get older in retirement, you tend to suddenly start hitting the desire to downsize. Uh, you start having changes in your family situation, whether it's your kids are getting older, maybe you suddenly have grandkids and you may suddenly want space you didn't have before or want to give up space that you had, but you tend to have shifts as you go through retirement. This is just normal life phases. And then as you get towards older retirement, more and more, you tend to want to downsize and move towards single story dwelling. So many people go into early retirement not thinking about the fact that they're probably going to be dreading stairs later in retirement. And so planning around not having stairs could be an important thing. Or how are you going to deal with a second floor if that's what you have? Maybe you want to move houses at that time. And then, of course, even later in retirement, you may be looking at the needs for having uh, a live-in assistant, a cook, a cleaner, and at some point, maybe a live-in nurse, and at some point, maybe moving to an assisted living facility. So with all these stages, you're looking at major potential changes in what housing makes sense for you. The one thing that doesn't make sense throughout this process is owning a house. Owning a house puts all these things at risk. And, and none of this, these situations are we addressing that maybe you discover throughout this process that you also want to move at different times. Maybe in young retirement, you really want to be on a beach because you're going to swim. You're going to go walk on the beach. You're going to go have beers at the bar. And it's going to be like a very social thing. You can still go out dancing. But later in retirement, you may want to be downtown. So it's much easier to get to and from the places that you go. You're looking at earlier times of day doing dinner and, and maybe a much uh, lower key social life at night. So you may be looking at houses on the beach at one age and apartments downtown at another. Having purchased may make it very difficult to make a shift or at least a lot more expensive and less fluid. So as you're going into retirement, this is actually a really important time to be considering not owning a house at all. Even if you already own a house, it is a good time to think about shedding that. And it is really common as people spend time in retirement. At first, they tend to be like, I'm so happy I get to spend time at home. And after not too long, they're like, but now my home doesn't make sense for me. I'm wondering what I need to do because my house is too big. It, I want to entertain differently. I'm not in the spot I want to be anymore. The place that I chose when I commuted to the office uh, is not the same place that I want to be when I, I only want to go to the beach or only want to go to restaurants or just want to have friends over and sit outside on the patio. Everything changes. And maybe you now you're spending a lot more time inside your house. Maybe you're spending a lot less time inside your house. Like everybody retires differently. Maybe you're going to be traveling a lot, in which case having a small apartment in a gated community or in a, in a managed building could be really important uh, as opposed to having a house you have to worry about. If you're going to be home all the time, maybe you have one set. Like everybody changes as you go into retirement and throughout retirement. And you change typically more and more quickly during your retirement years than you did in all the years previous. Of course, going from like 17 to 20, you tend to go through a lot of life changes. You have small windows throughout your life when you tend to go through some really big changes pretty quickly. But for the majority of your life cycle, you have much slower rate of change than you do during typically retirement. And so in retirement is actually the time that you're most likely to benefit from renting at basically every stage. And I know that there is an emotional tie to owning a house. And as we come into retirement, we tend to give in more and more to those emotional pleas from inside our own brains that say, oh, I just want to own a house. I want the stability. It feels safe. But mathematically, it often is not. It may be something that's very reckless financially. And retirement is not a time to really be reckless financially. Of course, you may have billions of dollars in the bank and it doesn't matter at all, in which case you don't need my advice. Buy as many houses as you want. And it doesn't matter. Hire someone to do all of it for you, whatever. But if you're in a position where retirement is something where you have to plan around your savings and make good decisions, then this is a great time to really stop and say, do I actually have a value to having a house? 
if I feel rushed, if I feel that I have to buy without doing my due diligence, that suggests I don't have the time and flexibility and ability to absorb risk of buying a house. Getting a rental that makes sense for me is, is going to let you move faster. It's going to let you enjoy your retirement faster instead of spending three years going, okay, this is just temporary. We're going to buy a place in three years. Then we can start like settling down. No, just rent and start settling down now. Make the decision. Oh, we picked the wrong city. Great. Hire someone to move it. Go to the next city. Figure it out there. Look at Scott Moore from There's Got to Be Something More. They just, they're moving from city to city in their retirement, their early retirement. They're young and vibrant and they're able to go places. And that's what they're doing. They're jumping from place to place and making lots of decisions. And then someday after many years, they plan of traveling all over Latin America, they then want to settle into some place once they're at that point in their retirement where bouncing around isn't so easy anymore. That's fantastic. It makes a lot of sense. They're enjoying their time. They're using that time to enjoy moving around and seeing different places and using that time to make really good decisions about where they want to be. They started thinking maybe Nicaragua is where they wanted to be, but then they discovered that they like Guatemala a lot more. Great for them, but they've got a lot of places to go yet. They may discover that same process happens again in the future. We will see. But that whole thing really makes sense when you're looking at early retirement that why not get in and enjoy your retirement right away? Why spend that time focused on buying a house, owning a house, fixing a house, maintaining a house, worrying about a house when you decide it's not the right place or you decide you want to travel and now it's empty? There's so many hassles that come with owning a house and so little flexibility. I'm not saying that no one should own a house. Absolutely not. There are people who really enjoy owning a house. There's people who really enjoy doing their own maintenance, really enjoy doing customizations, want to flip houses, just want to invest, want to buy something that's going to be handed over to their children. But that's not the norm. That's not the average. For most people, that doesn't actually make sense. That is just a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of risk, a lot of inflexibility, and a lot of probably not going to pan out it's not a place to necessarily spend your nest egg when you're in the years of, of using your nest egg to create those comfortable final years for yourself. This is the time, more than anywhere else, right, that making good, sound, conservative financial decisions makes sense. And buying a house is anything but conservative. That doesn't make it bad. It's just really liberal. It's very, I'm taking risks with my money. I'm playing against the market. I'm playing against financial uh, expectations. If you have enough money to play those games, do what makes you happy. If you have so much money that it doesn't matter at all, do whatever. But if you're in the position like most of us where you want to spend your money, if the better you spend your money, the better you're going to be able to live your retirement, then this is a really important decision to make sure you're not locking yourself into something that's going to be rough for you. That doesn't mean you can't rent a house. It doesn't mean you can't rent a big house. I live in a very large estate here in Leon, Nicaragua, and I rent. I don't own, I don't want to own this property, right? It's, it's a great property for me right now, but I know that it's not the perfect property for me. I don't want this to be a place where I spend my nest egg. If I'm going to spend time here, I want it to be a rental where I don't have to worry about big problems. I don't want to have to worry about the fact that maybe the well's going to run out of water. I don't need to worry about what the neighbors are like today or maybe you're going to be like tomorrow. I don't need to worry about any of those things. I can just move. I don't have to worry about if my residency doesn't come through and Nicaragua decides I'm persona non grata. Well, that would be unfortunate. I worry that that could happen, of course, but I don't worry about it. Like, what would I do? I own a house here. I can just leave and go on to another country, very likely Guatemala or El Salvador. I love the area and they would be happy to have me. But I love being in Nicaragua and Nicaragua is happy to have me for now. So I don't have to worry about those things. But if I owned a house, I would be under additional risk. Just like if someone moved to the United States, they're not at a point where they're a citizen. They don't have that permanency of guaranteed being able to live in the country for the rest of their lives. They still have to justify it from time to time. Do they want to put all of their money into buying a house? especially in a market. Now, in the U.S., it's very easy to sell a house. Here in Nicaragua, it can be very hard to sell a house under many circumstances. Do you want to be in a position where you've made a decision and maybe it's as simple as your family in some other country has decided they really need you to come back and they and they need you to be there and, and you're going to help take care of grandkids because some, something has happened and, and now your house that all your money has gone into, you can't live in. Now you have to pay somebody to watch over it and take care of it and there's just, it, it just, you don't, generally want to have those kinds of risks and fears in your retirement, there isn't really generally a reason that you need to do that. Consider that you may want to just use your retirement as a time to retire rather than to be actively investing in property-based real estate when 
it generally takes decades to come to fruition. And in order for it to be a payoff, it's got to be a lot of things have to align all during the time that you're retired. And when it comes time that you've got to sell it because that's what the market dictates, you may not be in a position where you want to switch homes all of a sudden. Like it's just not a wise thing to do during retirement under normal circumstances. So I, I really want to get across this point. The more that you feel emotionally that the process of going through due diligence and choosing a house feels like too much work or something you don't want to do because you're in retirement and you don't have a lot of time should be exactly the big red flag that wait, maybe the process of buying a house altogether is a problem and not something you want to do. Now, I understand there are some situations where you want a very specific home or property and there isn't something available for rent and you re and you have enough money and you're willing to put that money into something that you're going to take a risk on. You've evaluated that and you're going to get the place that you want. And the only way to do it is to buy it. I understand and it can make sense for you. you. You could easily be that exception. But stop for a minute, step back and really think, are you that exception? If, what are your priorities? Are you looking to buy a house simply because it feels like that's what you're supposed to do? And of course, if you're coming from most markets like the United States, society wants you to buy houses. Everybody but you benefits from you buying a house, even when it doesn't make sense. Taxes get paid to the government. Real estate agents make their cuts. Sellers get to sell a house. People selling furniture and all those things. The society in general gets a little bit more money. The economy grows when you buy a house. So everybody is trying to get your money, including the government, including your neighbors, they all benefit from you spending recklessly, but you don't. You're the one who has to look out for you. You're the only one who's completely dedicated to your own concerns. And you need to stop for a second and say, wait, am I just doing this for everyone else? Or does buying a house actually serve a purpose for me and my family in my retirement? Is this for me or am I just doing it because it's what you're supposed to do? That it's this emotional pressure that we get from who knows where Let's stop and think, because in a lot of cases, I think that's why we're buying houses. So to Javier's specific points, if taking three years to find the right house seems like that's too much to risk putting into buying a house, I think you have your answer. Don't buy a house. And if after doing many years of research, you're concerned that the house and location and decisions that you've made won't be adequate and that you'll be fearful that you're then locked into something that may still not be right for you, then you doubly have your answer that if with that much due diligence, it's still not safe for you to be locked into something, of course, locked in for six to 12 months, no problem. Then you probably have your answer for sure. Buying a house isn't the right answer for you. And that's not a bad thing. That's not an unusual thing. That's not something to feel bad about at all. I totally understand why. We're taught to feel emotionally bad about that, but it's not the case. This is simply good, decision-making for you during a time of life where good decision-making is extra important and during a time of life where people are more likely to try to prey on us to make a quick buck. We all know that during retirement ages, people are more likely to try to sell us property, to sell us investment schemes and all kinds of things. It's a great time to pull back and have fewer large permanent decisions and more flexible decisions that let us learn more about ourselves, what we're going to be like during retirement. For most people, like my in-laws, it takes years of being retired before you really have a good understanding of what you are like retired. I work all the time and I plan to work for at least the next 20 years and very likely the next 25. In doing that, when I do finally retire, assuming that I make it that far and do actually bother to retire, I'm going to be an entirely different person than I am now, and I can't even begin to predict what I'm going to want to do with that free time. Plus, I don't know what my physical situation is going to be. Am I still gonna be walking like I am now? Probably not. Even two years ago, I was walking a lot more than when my dog broke my foot. I still walk a lot less and a lot more lumbering than I did just a couple years ago. I would never have predicted that my foot would have been horrifically broken and it would impact years of my life for walking, and that's really unfortunate because it's something that I love, but it's something I have to adjust to. And who knows how many things will happen over the next 20 or 25 years that will make my retirement potentially more difficult for me, plus just age in general. Maybe I'm going to find that I really want to have a nice armchair, an air-conditioned small room, and a big screen where I can watch movies, and that's just what I enjoy doing. I don't enjoy doing that now, not very often, with, with my kids, of course, but not something I just sit down and do on my own. But when I'm retired, maybe I'll love to do that. My wife's father loves watching movies. I don't know if he did that that much when he was younger. Pretty sure he did, but these are the kinds of things that you may adjust to as you get old. Maybe I'll start reading books. Maybe I'll play more video games. Maybe who knows what I'll do 
and what those things will will evolve as I retire and how those things will uh, change me and my housing situations, not just what style of house I want to have, but where I want to have that house, what I want the weather to be like, what, do I want to be downtown so I can just have food delivered? Do I want to be on the beach and suddenly want to sit on the beach all the time when I don't want to now? All kinds of things may change. So I know from my own projected future, I can't make big buying decisions for that age you probably can't either. It is very common. So don't look at this as a negative. Don't look at this as a, oh, I can't believe this terrible thing. No. Say, wow, we may have just found a way to significantly lower our stress, increase our financial power, maybe not reduce your spending, but make your spending more powerful and flexible, and give yourselves more protection and options to allow yourself to have a retirement that makes more sense for you in ways you may very likely not be able to predict yet and just experience retirement and, and evolve with it as, as that uh, progression happens. Thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe. I hope that this is valuable. Of course, as always, comments, questions, get down there below, or even better, follow the directions in the description below on how to make a video and send it in to me so that I can put you guys into the show and have interactive uh, conversations with you guys and, and introduce the show to more, more, more of you to the people who watch the show. If you'd like to support the channel financially, of course, that would be amazing. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That really does help a lot make the show possible. And thank you so much to so many people who do that. I really appreciate it. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, share on social media, tell someone you know about the show, get them hooked and watching and commenting and sending in videos. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And as I now say every time at the end of the video, I'm going to pop up some videos here, click on one of them to help support the channel.